So Bruce, uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi all, I'm Bruce D. Gordon. I'm originally from Montreal and I moved to Ottawa with my wife and cat, Gordon. Uh, around 20 years ago where I'm a public servant by day and I am a writer, uh, a guitar player and watcher of, of uh, superhero TV shows at night. <laughs> and uh, about four years ago, uh, my hip 50, uh, wifey challenged me to uh, put together uh, and start writing a novel. And I took that challenge up in, during the NaNoWriMo period. And uh, I put together uh, this mock autobiography about a character, as a humorous mock autobiography about a character named Rick Duncan, uh, who, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> I'm a little nervous. This is my first time doing this. <laughs> uh, who on the eve of his 50th birthday is reflecting through his life uh, as he rummages. Uh, so uh, anyways, I'm hoping that uh, I can uh, present to you a couple of uh, excerpts from a scene and uh, would this be a good time to do that? Yes, absolutely. Please uh, give us a, a little reading. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> uh, so thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, I'd like to read to you excerpts from a chapter called Heavy Metal. Um, a scene where middle-aged Rick is reminiscing about his high school years. It takes place in the fall of 1983, around the time he turned 16, and where he first meets the future members of his punk band, Scottish Rod. I ask that you please indulge me as I destroy British accent a little later on in the reading. Uh, metal soothed my teen angst. I spent many a quiet night sitting in the dark listening to Iron Maiden and Black Sabbath. I'd always wanted to emulate the fashion of these bands, but my school enforced a strict dress code with our uniforms. I once wore a studded bracelet and hid it under my blazer. When I raised my hand in class to answer a question revealing my studs, a teacher confiscated it. He gave me two days detention where I was forced to write a 1,500 word essay called Why Uniforms Are Important for Rearing Young Men. I wanted to join the Headbangers clique. Like me, they all had long hair and listened to the bands I loved. I tried on a few occasions to strike up a conversation with them in, in between classes, but they never listened. Maybe I should have teased my hair and worn eyeliner. One lunch hour, I spotted a few of them hanging in the school field, sitting around a large tree with some girls from our sister school, Eleanor's Lady School, or Els for short. Els was located at the far end of the field, and the boys and girls often fraternized during breaks. A dark-haired headbanger sat on the top of a picnic table, entertaining the group with his guitar. A tall girl wearing the Els green blazer and skirt leaned against his shoulder. Her pink hair stood out amongst the metalheads. It being propped short and spiked made her look dangerous. If the bright pink hair didn't get my attention, the guitarist's shoes sure did. They were black and shone like mirrors in the bright sunlight. He finished the instrumental, Mood for a Day, and the girl whispered something in his ear, kissed his cheek, then strolled off in the direction of her school. Her height and motion reminded me of a model strutting on a catwalk. The guitarist admired his shoes while the gang applauded. He poised himself and began picking an arpeggio for another song. I recognized it immediately. I love Triumph. I closed my eyes and started singing about how it's the same old story. I felt every note of the guitar and I belted out the entire tune in front of a group of strangers. When I finished the last note, I realized what I had done. My nerves paralyzed me, but the thunderous applause helped me regain my composure. A few headbangers patted my back and shook my hand as, they, as the group disbanded to return to classes. The guitarist and I were left alone. He spent a few moments staring at his shoes, then looked me up and down. You're in, he said. Huh? You're in my band. Our singer quit a week ago, and you're, you've got an amazing rock voice. He gazed at his reflection in his shoes again and pointed them both to the right, making the sunshine more off of them. But we might need to work on your look. A headbanger wants me to be in his band? Before I can answer him, he said, I'm Greg Wilde. You're uh, Rick Duncan? We have two weeks to practice for the first interschool battle of the bands. I want to win this thing. Music is my life and a recording contract is at stake. Welcome aboard. 
Meet me after school tomorrow and I'll take you to our practice. Greg patted my shoulder and walked back to school. Wait, do I have a say in this? I yelled at him, nice shoes. Why on earth did that spill out of my mouth? He turned back to me and lifted his pant leg, not shoes, combat boots, and walked off. Huh, and I can't wear my studs. I brought my guitar and nap to school the next day and met Greg after classes. <clears throat> we walked for a while and Greg gave me the lowdown on the upcoming Battle of the Bands. We'll win, he said. The sound of bass and drums boomed through the neighborhood. Sounds like the boys are warming up. My eardrums are bleeding. We walked up the driveway of a home where the garage door opened. A bassist and drummer were playing as fast as humanly possible, creating a distorted mess. They both had long hair like Greg and were still in school uniform. The tall bassist stopped his noodling, but the drummer, oblivious, continued. A skunky odor filled the garage with a light color, uh, with a light cloud around the drum kit. Hello, Greg, the bassist said with a British accent. It was the giant key tip. Greg laughed. John Jones, this is Rick Duncan, our new singer. Nice to meet you, Mr. Duncan. I hope you can sing, because I can't play a bloody note. He peeled off a riff that would have made Getty Lee of Rush envious. Well, perhaps, when Getty first picked up the bass. Uh, nice to meet you. I like your accent. Where are you from? My mother's womb, John chuckled. No, seriously, I'm from over there. He pointed in the direction we came in from. What, from across the road? I asked. Bloody hell no, I'm from across the pond. John paused and clapped his hands. Chop, chop, Greg, get set up. I want to hear this new bloke sing. The drummer stopped his solo and the cloud dissipated. He stared blankly at me. Mascara ran down his cheek and a funny cigarette dangled from his mouth. Hello, he asked with a French accent. He resumed his stare. Oh, don't mind him, said John. He's had a bit too much of the pfft, pfft. John simulated toking a joint. Andre Bastian might be bombed out of his mind, but he's the talent of our band. Uh, Pleased to meet you, Andre. How long have you been playing? I asked. Andre didn't answer. He sat motionless. One year? Silence. Two years? More silence. Five? He pointed at me, grunted, turned his head, and scratched his ear with a drumstick. He put it down and motioned like he was trying to catch invisible flies in midair. Okay. Greg plugged in his guitar amp and strummed a power chord. Let's get going, Rick. You can place your amplifier over by mine. You know I want to be sedated? I nodded and plugged my guitar in as instructed. Two microphones were perched on stands in front of the garage. I took my place behind one and we rocked out. My choral training and crackly voice suited the music. The Ramones song had a chord structure I liked and I continued strumming it when we finished. The microphone enhanced a growl in my voice and I spontaneously started ad-libbing a song by spitting out random lyrics. I'm so clueless and snort smarties, got gas and tooted, I got farties. Where's the brain? Ah! Where's the brain? Ah! Where's the brain? Ah! Where is it? Quick guitar lick. I'm so clueless, I'm so clueless, I'm so clueless, I'm so bloody useless. Ah! Singing in a low growl, where is it? Singing in Alfred, Alfred and the Chipmunks falsetto. The brain! Where is it? The brain! Where is it? Song abruptly ends. John's eyebrows rose. Sounds like an it. I'm not quite sure what you're implying in the song, but I love it. I, Greg, you've been trying to write songs for years and this bloke does it in five minutes. Greg laughed. Rick's gonna be our secret weapon. John continued. I'll do the Oz with a metal scream and Greg, you can do a three note guitar solo at the, after the second chorus. Let's see what it sounds like. It took us about 10 minutes to perfect the song. And I use the word perfect loosely. A tan Mercury Bobcat pulled into the driveway halfway through our third pass of Where's the Brain. The pink haired girl from lunch stepped out. No longer in school uniform, she modeled a mini skirt, leather jacket with studs and multiple piercings. Greg put down his guitar in mid song. Hey, Julie, he said. 
Sean stopped playing. Hey, you know the rules, Greg. No girlfriends during session. Julie rolled her eyes. Greg's girlfriend walked over to him and placed her arm around his shoulder. She wasn't a fairer in my eyes, yet she had an alluring quality. From her aloof expression, Julie made it clear she didn't want to hang with us. Greg took the cue and packed his gear. Where are you going? protested John. I was planning to jam for a couple of hours. What about you, new boy? We sound amazing. We don't want to overdo it, Greg said while packing his gear. Okay, gang, we'll have one more practice the day before the show. Agreed? Before anyone can answer, he said, see you in school tomorrow. He took his gear out to the car. Andre stared at us, lit another joint, and started a drum beat. John resumed his bass playing. I figured they would be happier doing their own thing, so I piled in the car with Greg and Julie, and we drove off. Thank you very much. <laughs>